Hello everyone, it's been a while since I've made a video talking about the different Tenkara rods I use, so I thought the start of a new year would be an appropriate time for that. I'm going to be going over all of the Tenkara and Tenkara adjacent rods that I have and use. So when I say Tenkara adjacent, I mean uh, Keiryu and Seiryu rods, or however, however they're pronounced. They're fixed line rods that I use for my Tenkara style fishing. So I'm going to be going over uh, these up here. I have all my Tenkara rods hung up on the wall in this uh, homemade wall hanger thing. Then I also have, I don't know if you can see it right here, I have a, let's see, here we go, I have a, like a 97 cent little glass vase from Walmart that holds some of my super cheap, like generally $25 and under uh, Tenkara rods. So I'll go over some of those too. Then also at the start of the year, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about some of my travel plans and fishing plans for the upcoming year. So let's uh, let's do that. But first, let's start off with the rods over here. I'm going to start off with the shortest rod and go to the longest rod. So from the, the bottom here, going up to the top. So this is, I think, my newest acquisition. I bought this over Black Friday. This is the Tiny 10. This is a, just the cutest little Tenkara rod. I mean, this thing is, is just so tiny and so weird and just so cute. Um, but it's a five foot rod. I've not used it yet. Super small, very you know, pocketable. This is the shortest rod I have. I bought this to fish just super tight and compact and, uh, and brushy streams. Like I said, I haven't used it. It was $52, I think. That's the, that's the real t retail price. I got it a little bit cheaper over the Black, Black Friday sale. But yeah, relatively inexpensive. I'm going to be putting links to all of these rods in the video description also. I don't think I'll be able to fish this thing until spring or early summer, so it'll be a while, but eventually I will have a video or two of me using that rod. Next up is the Shimatsuki Kiyotaki 180. So this is a roughly 6 foot or 180 centimeter rod. This was, uh, this was $65 from eBay. Bought it off eBay earlier in the year. And um, I don't believe they are making or selling these anymore. They are very difficult to find now. You can still buy this rod in other lengths. It comes in a bunch of different lengths. Uh, and you can find those on eBay. But this particular one is not available, I don't think. So I'm, I'm happy I have it. It's a short rod. I have used this in a couple of videos to catch fish in, in pretty darn small streams. And it has caught some surprisingly large fish, like 11 or 12 inches on this rod, I think. It's a great little rod. I like it. Uh, it's it's relatively stiff. It's a Keiryu rod, but um, yeah, I like it. As I said, that rod comes in several different lengths. I have one of the other ones. This is the Shimatsuki Kiyotaki 270. So that's what, like 9 feet, a 9 foot rod. You can see how it compares to the, the 180. Similar in size. Uh, I have not used this rod. I got it I got it used for like $30, and so it was too good of a deal to pass up. Haven't used it. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to sometime in the next month or two here. I've taken it out and, and wiggled it around, but I, I haven't fished with it yet. This is the Zen Tenkara Suzumi. This is a triple zoom rod, meaning that it can be fished at three different lengths. It's a pricey rod. It's $230, I think, and... Um, I really first learned about this rod through uh, through the Teton Tenkara blog from Tom Davis, which I'm sure most, if not all of you guys, are familiar with. And he replaced the two tip sections on this rod with the two tip sections from the, let's see, which one is it? From the Tenkara USA Iwana, um, because he felt that these the stock two tip sections are softer than what he wanted, so he replaced them with the, the Iwana tip sections, which are a little bit stiffer, so that leads to better hook sets and a better um, ability to cast little beadhead flies. So I did that also. So I have those two replacement sections on here. Zentenkara sells what, what they call, I think, the performance tip, which is about $30, and I think it does basically the same thing. But this is a great little rod. I really like this rod. This was my first real Tenkara rod, my first good Tenkara rod. My first ever rod was the was one I got from Amazon. It was the Wildwater Tenkara rod, just like a very basic, generic, cheap, stiff, 12-foot um, Chinese rod. And it wasn't great. I sold it a while ago. And uh, this was my, my first good rod. And 
And I really like it. It's a great little rod. It's great for small streams uh, with with relatively small fish. I think I've landed fish up to about 16 inches on this. I mean, I've caught hundreds and hundreds of fish on this rod. I've fished with it quite a bit, and it feels very light. It's a very light, supple, skinny-handled rod. I really like this thing. And I'm not a technical rod reviewer. I just go by how it feels to me when I fish it. And so um, if you want to learn more about like the weight of the rod or or things like that, I'll, again, you can check the links in the video description. Zentenkara Suzumi, really nice small stream rod if you're, if you're generally targeting smaller fish, like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 inches and under, uh, then it's a, it's a really nice little rod. What I consider kind of the big brother to that rod is this. This is the Dragon Tail Mizuchi rod. Again, it's a triple zoom rod. It can be fished at three different lengths. And both of these are roughly like eight feet, nine and a half feet, and 11 feet. Those are, I mean, they're, they're pretty similar as far as the lengths go, um, extended lengths. But overall, the, the Zentenkara Suzumi, this rod feels much lighter and is much lighter than, uh, than the Mizuchi. It's a little bit shorter in its, in its packed length. But um, this is also a really great small stream rod. And um, if you do expect to be hooking into bigger fish consistently, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18 inch fish, I've landed a, a, an, eight, an 18 inch fish in a small creek with this rod. You can really muscle trout around. You can be in control of bigger trout with this rod really well. It's a relatively inexpensive rod. It's $160, I believe. So a good bit cheaper than the Zentenkara Suzumi, but both are, are good rods. I would say that if you're like fishing little brook trout streams, this is a good rod. If you're fishing uh, streams in the west that can have bigger fish, then, then the, the Mizuchi is a, is a good option for you. This is the Nissan Zero Sum rod in the 360 centimeter length, which is about 12 feet. This is a premium Japanese rod. This is a really nice Tenkara rod. Retails for about $265 from Tenkara Bum. I bought it used for significantly less than that. Uh, this is the 7.3 power uh, version, which means it's a little bit stiffer, basically, than, uh, than the 6.4, for example. And uh, it, it's, it's a really nice rod. It feels, feels very crisp when you're casting it. Very crisp, very accurate casts. And uh, I, I, again, I feel in control with, of fish when I'm landing fish with this rod. I haven't fished this rod a ton, but I've caught several 12, 13, 14 inch trout with this rod. And uh, it's really nice and it, it looks good. It, it, it fishes well. It's just a really nice overall rod. If you're looking for a good premium Japanese rod, this one comes in various lengths and uh, I think you'd be happy with it. This is the Dragon Tail Mutant. It's kind of the the big brother of the Dragon Tail Mizuchi in the sense that it, it can be fished at longer lengths. This is a nice kind of all-around, relatively inexpensive Tenkara rod. I, b I believe it's $160 is the retail price and uh, it feels, feels good in the hand. It has a, has a skinnier handle than the Mizuchi. I noticed that almost instantly when I, when I grabbed this rod. And I think Brent from Dragon Tail told me that they're going to be switching over uh, to use this grip on the Mizuchi. If they haven't done that already, I think that's that's in the works. I haven't fished this rod a ton. I've caught maybe, I don't know, 20 or 30 fish on it on a few different outings. And I like it. Um, I, you know, I, it's, it's nothing super special. It's, it's not, it's not a mind-blowing rod. But again, if you are looking for a good first Tenkara rod and aren't entirely sure what lengths you're going to be fishing it at, then something like this would be a good first rod. And it's it's not as stiff as the Mizuchi, and so uh, it, it feels a little bit nicer when you're casting it. It has more flex to it. It's just a nice rod. I didn't really need it. I, I backed it on Kickstarter earlier this year, I guess a handful of months ago. I didn't really need it. I don't really need another rod in this length, but I bought it just to, you know, to try it out or maybe to loan it out to, to friends when I, when I take people fishing for the first time. Don't have much else to say about it, but I like it well enough. This is the Dragon Tail Nirvana 400 rod. So this is a about a 13 foot rod, 400 centimeter rod. This is probably my least favorite rod that I have. Um, it's fine. It's not a bad rod. I just, 
it doesn't really connect with me. Um, it's meant for a meant to be a big fish rod. Uh, Brent catches you know big old 20 plus inch trout on this rod, and I think that if I consistently did that kind of fishing, if I fished bigger water for big trout, then I'd probably like this rod more. But I fish for relatively small trout, and um, it's just not just doesn't do it for me. I don't love it. I still have it because uh, I occasionally do fish for for bigger fish. Like a couple months ago I fished for uh, for kokanee salmon, and this was a great rod for that. Uh, it's a strong rod, but I found that it just doesn't connect with me when I'm casting. Um, it takes more effort for me to get good casts with this rod than it does for me to get good casts with, with other similar rods. Like, uh, I like the Mutant more than I like this rod, and I like both of the next two rods that I'll be showing you more than this rod. So overall, it's probably my least favorite of the, I guess, three dragon tail rods that I have. It's not terrible, it's just kind of fine. And I, I, I don't think I would choose to use this rod if I have these other ones available to me. But again, I've kept it for when I do go after bigger fish. And it's a relatively inexpensive rod. Right now, I think it's on sale for 140-ish dollars. I don't know what the normal retail price is, maybe 160, 180, something like that, but I think it goes on sale fairly often. And so, again, it's not too crazy expensive. And if you do want a, you know, a, a nicer, bigger rod for big uh, American-sized trout, then I think that can be a, a good candidate for you. This is the Tanuki XL1 rod. This is a 13-foot, 3-inch rod, about 405 centimeters, I think. This is the most expensive rod I own, and it's a really nice rod. I wanted, so I bought this rod after fishing quite a bit with, with the Nirvana 400. I wanted something that, this long, but that was much lighter, just felt nicer to cast for me. And I didn't want to get a, a, a high-end Japanese rod, like I didn't want to get the, the 400 centimeter version of the Zero Sum, for example, because I wanted to be able to get replacement parts for it really quickly. I wanted to be able to just go online in five minutes order a part and have it to my house in a few days. And that's that's not the case with the, the higher end Japanese rods. It's, uh, it takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more time and money to get those replacement parts. And so I ordered this rod again, based off of the uh, the really quite glowing review from Tom of Teton Tankara. He really liked this rod in that review. It, it's super light. It's, uh, it's really just a joy to cast, a joy to fish with. I think on the Tanuki website, they say that um, this is the longest, or the, the lightest rod of this length, the lightest Tenkara rod of this length. It's lighter than most Japanese rods of this length, or all Japanese Tenkara rods of this length. And so, uh, as you'd expect for the price and, and for the, the lightness, it, it's just a, a beautifully casting rod. Slow, just really, really nice. And it can handle decently sized fish. I've caught, I haven't fished with this rod a ton yet. I fished with it maybe half a dozen times. Uh, I don't even know if you've seen any of those videos yet. I can't remember if I've posted any videos of me fishing with this rod, but you'll be seeing those in the in the upcoming two or three months. And it really is a nice rod. Again, pricey. It's hard for me to justify this to other people when you can get a, a nice Japanese rod for the for the same price. But if you do want to have the the good customer service of being able to order replacement parts really quickly and easily, then it's something to consider. This is the last of the, the good rods I wanted to show you, the last of the, of the rods on the wall here. This thing is so good. So this is the Daiwa Siguri 45 MC. This is made by a Japanese company made in Thailand, I believe. And it is a zoom rod, so it can be fished at, let me see here, either 400 centimeters or 450 centimeters. That's like 13 feet to a little bit under 15 feet. So very wrong, very long rod super light, uh, has no cork or foam grip on it. This is a Seiryu rod, so it's not made for a, you know, high gradient mountain streams, little mountain streams in, in Japan. It's made for a, I think like slower moving water and, and smaller fish. But you can obviously fish it Tenkara style for trout in streams. And uh, this thing is just a joy to use. It's $155, so pretty inexpensive. And it is, it's the best casting rod I own, I think. It's just so light, feels so good. You can get fly first casts basically every time. And um, they make a smaller version of this that's, um, so this is the, 
the 45 MC. They make a 39 MC, I think. So it's a little bit shorter, also a zoom rod, and I'm considering getting that one just because I like this one so much. And again, I got this used for um, for pretty cheap, so I got a good deal on this. But even paying $155 for this is something that I would that I would do because um, it's it's such a good rod. It's so good, it feels really nice. It's not for not for big fish. It's a big rod, but it's it doesn't have a ton of backbone to it. I've caught grayling up to about 14 inches on it. You'll be seeing that video also sometime in the next couple of months. I fished for grayling in a in a mountain lake in Montana with this rod and it's, it's just so good guys. It's a really great rod and I've heard only good things about it and it's slightly shorter little brother. So if you're looking for something that's relatively cheap that uh, that casts just super well, man it's hard to go wrong with with this thing. So those are the uh, kind of the the good rods that I have. Let me show you the the bundle of them here. You know, got got quite a few, probably more than the average Tenkara angler. But I know there are people who have several dozen Tenkara rods. I am still working on my my first dozen here. But um, yeah, I'm I'm happy with with the collection so far. I'm always looking to add more rods to it. So I expect that this will change quite a bit in 2021. I'm, I'm um, going to be getting a couple new rods I have my eye on. One of them is the, the Suntec Kurenai HM33, I think it is. So it's the the uh, the 11 foot Suntec Kurenai rod, Kurenai rod, and it's just a kind of similar to this in that it's a just a very thin, light, beautifully casting Japanese rod, and those are about two hundred dollars and. I think that would be a fun one to add to the collection. Then I've been thinking about getting like a, a 17, 18, or 20 foot rod, like a truly big rod for fishing some of the big rivers around here. I live next to two famous trout rivers here in eastern Idaho, Henry's Fork and the South Fork of the Snake River. These are two big fish, big water rivers. And I live like 15 minutes from them. I think they'd be fun to fish with a big old rod like that. They're carry rods, those rods that I'm looking at. They're not true Tenkara rods, but again, I'd be fishing them Tenkara style. Not sure yet which one of those I'd be getting. There are, I think, three or four on Tenkara bum that I'm considering, but they're pretty expensive, like three pushing $400 for one of those rods for the ones that I'm looking at. So I'm not in a, in a huge rush to be, to be buying one of those, but I wouldn't be surprised if at some point this year I do get one of those. So now let's move over to the the rods in this little glass vase over here. Let me go, let me just go grab that and bring it over here. So let's go through these pretty quickly. These three, so these are all super cheap Chinese rods, either from Amazon or AliExpress. These three were all under $10 each and they are all not good. Uh, I've tried fishing with all of these. I've caught fish on all three of these, but they are not good rods. So. I'm not even gonna tell you what they are or or talk about them. They're not really worth talking about, but they are in my collection. And then I have, you've probably seen these. Uh, these are, ugh, these are super cheap Chinese rods. Again, under about $10 uh, on AliExpress. And you can also get them in, in various lengths on Amazon. And I have, let's see, I have the 180 centimeter one, which I have fished before and I've caught fish on it. It's actually not too terrible. I mean, there aren't a whole lot of options for decent sized fish uh, in, in the five, six foot range. Like you don't want to go fishing for trout on one of those four or five foot Tanago rods, those ultra light or ultra short Japanese rods made for catching fish that are like this big. And so your options are limited in that size class. And so this one, I mean, I've caught decent sized trout on it, not a terrible rod. I also have it in the 210 version, 210 length, 210 centimeters. Haven't fished this one yet. I have fished with the 300 centimeter version, so that's about 10 feet, and uh, it's it's probably the best of these for if you want to do actual tenkara fishing, fish a little stream for trout. This one is is doable. Um, it's not amazing, but. I mean, if you just want to give Tenkara or Tenkara style fishing a try, you know, these aren't, these aren't true Tenkara rods, but you can fish them Tenkara style. And uh, of these four that I have, 
Um, this is the best one for that. And again, I have a video coming of me fishing with that rod. The 360 centimeter, so the 12 foot version of this, of this rod, is pretty bad. Like it's super, I mean, it's not that heavy. It's, it's about three and a half ounces. So um, that's about the weight of a, of a heavy Chinese made Tenkara rod, but it's just really badly balanced. You almost feel like you have to fish it with two hands. It's just really unpleasant to fish with. I've caught three or four fish on it and I don't really have the desire to, to catch any more. It's, it's pretty bad. The, the 300 centimeter version is significantly better in that regard. Then I have, this thing is weird. I don't remember the name of it. I don't uh, know anything about it except that I bought it off of AliExpress for 10 or $12. It's just a weird kind of loop, uh, lipstick tube rod. Not great. Uh, it is, I think, eight, eight or nine feet long. Um, my wife and I went tubing down a river a few months ago, and we we brought this along just as a you know cheap rod. I, I didn't care if it, if it broke or anything like that. We brought this along to fish with it. Caught probably about a dozen fish between the two of us. It's stiff and it's not especially good, but it's just weird, and so that's that's why I kind of like it. I didn't post a full video of my wife and I fishing with this rod, but I did post a clip of it to my Instagram account. If you look up Tenkara Addict on Instagram, you can see me fish with this, or see my wife catch a fish with that. And then we have the Max Catch Mini Tenkara Rod. This was about $52, I think. I don't remember if I bought this on Amazon or eBay, but it, um, it is occasionally for sale on Amazon. Sometimes it's out of, out of stock. And I think it's also on AliExpress, all for around $50 or $52. Really didn't like this rod. Uh, this is really not a good rod. It's cool because it's so short. It's about let me see, I have a ruler right here. Just under 13 inches, about 12 and a half inches. But it, it's one of the more unpleasant rods I've fished with. Just feels super stiff, quite heavy. Um, you know, with a good rod, you kind of forget that you're using it. You forget that you're fishing with it. I never forgot I was fishing with this rod. It was always something I kind of had to, to struggle with. I mean, you can catch fish with it. It's not so bad that you can't fish with it, but it's not a great rod. And again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but I do have uh, one or two videos of me fishing with that rod coming up in the future. And then this one actually surprised me. So this is the the Gocher or Gotour Breeze rod. And, um, you know, this is obviously not a Tenkara rod, but I saw reviews of this rod on Amazon. So I think this was 20 or $25 on Amazon. And it's also on AliExpress if you wanna pay a little bit less and wait longer to get it. It is 28 inches long in its collapsed state. And is a, this is a 360 centimeter rod, so about 12 feet long. The reviews of this rod on Amazon are just glowing. Like the, the, top, the top rated review is a guy saying, this is way better than any other Tenkara rod I've tried. And, and to that, I would just say, it's not. Uh, <laughs> if you think that, I don't think you've used enough other good Tenkara rods. But I will say that I was actually pretty surprised at how well this rod fished. Again, this and the, the 300 centimeter version of this yellow rod are actually somewhat decent. You can actually cast a fly with these two rods. And of these two, I think I would probably recommend this one. Again, it's not a great rod, and most of the time you won't forget that you're fishing with it, but occasionally you might, and so it's it's actually, it's not awful. I'll say that. Uh, again, it's not like super well balanced for casting. It feels a little bit, you know, it's got some momentum to it, let's say, when you're casting it, but surprisingly decent rod if you just want to pay $20 and and fished some uh, some Tenkara style fishing, then yeah, why not? You know, give this thing a try. Get it for your kid. You know, if you have a, a, a six or eight year old and, and want to teach them how to fish, then get one of these. I think it comes in different lengths. Not entirely sure, but yeah, surprisingly decent rod for twenty five dollars. So that's it as far as the as far as the rods go. If I had to pick my favorites. Definitely the, the Daiwa Sigiri 45MC. I think probably probably the, the Mizuchi. I think that with these two rods, I mean, you can cover a lot of ground. Or again, if you're into 
fishing smaller streams for smaller fish, maybe the, the Suzumi instead. But, I mean, this covers everything from 8 feet to 15 feet. So you can cover a lot of different sizes of water. But I like, you know, I like all of the rods. I really like most of them except for the, the Nirvana 400, which I just kind of like. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I just kind of like it. The, all the others, all the other real ones, um, you know, I, I really like. They're, they're good rods. And then I also wanted to talk a little bit about my 2021 travel plans. So for those of you who don't know, basically I, I travel for a living. I make travel and adventure videos on my other channel. It's called SUV RVing. And because of that, I travel around the Western United States a lot. And that's how I'm able to fish so much. I, I fit in the Tankara fishing when I can, when I'm on those SUV RVing trips. And that's how I'm able to travel to and fish so many different places. So this next year, uh, I'm not entirely sure yet what my travel plans are, but I'm gonna probably be doing trips to, to Oregon and Washington, mostly Washington, but this will probably be in May. And so, I mean, I don't think that's a great time for creek fishing in Washington state. I'm guessing that, uh, well, first of all, I don't know when the trout season opens again in Washington. I know in Oregon, it opens up in like the last week of, of May the 20th or 22nd or something like that. I don't remember when the Washington trout season opens, but anyway, assuming that I'm there early in the trout season, like in May or early June, uh, let me know if you know of any small mountain streams, uh, mostly in the western part of the state, so the Cascades, basically. If you know of little pocket water trout streams in the Cascades, or even the Olympics, that have either um, coastal cutthroat, or I guess in the Cascades, if you know of small streams that have west slope cutthroat, let me know. I'd love to fish those streams. I'd love to catch those fish. You can use the contact form that's linked to on the tankaraaddict.com website to get in touch with me. I'm not super keen on meeting up with other people uh, this next year because of, you know, coronavirus is still a thing. It still will be a thing in 2021. I think it's probably best if we don't intermingle too much, but um, if you are willing to share your, your streams with me of where I can catch those fish, that would be great. I'll probably show that stream in a video here on the channel, but I, you know, I don't say the names of the streams that I'm fishing, so your secret stream will be safe with me. I don't advertise where I'm fishing or anything like that, so if you're willing to to let me know of some of those places, that'd be, that'd be great to hear. And then I think I'm also going to be doing a trip to Colorado. I, I've been to Colorado a bunch of times, a lot of times, but I haven't spent a ton of time fishing there. I've only caught fish there once, and so I'm gonna go to the mountains this year and spend some time in the mountains in Colorado. And I'd like to catch some Rio Grande cutthroat trout and some greenback cutthroat trout. I've had people tell me a few different streams of, uh, of where to catch the Rio Grande cutthroat trout in southern southern Colorado, but I've, I'd love to hear more if you're willing to share that. But I don't have too much intel about the, the greenback cutthroat streams, so if you want to share some of those with me, I'm willing to take that information. And then also I live in southeastern Idaho, so I'll be fishing here in Idaho a lot, and Montana, and Wyoming, and Utah. Those are the states that I fish most when I'm not traveling farther afield. Those are the states that I have annual fishing licenses to, so I can go wherever in those states and, and fish wherever. So you can expect to see more of that on the channel. And then I think also on that Colorado trip, I'll be going to, I'll be dipping down into New Mexico and Arizona to be catching Gila and Apache trout. So if you know good streams for those in those states, I, I do have some streams marked. I, I know of where I'm planning on going fishing in those states, but again, I'm always open to, to hearing more places to fish. So that's it. Those are some of my tentative travel plans for 2021. And I guess that wraps up this video. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'll put links to all these rods, uh, at least all, all the links I can find in the video description. I'll see you in the next video.